Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video for countability. This is the introduction set of slides. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to state the definition of a countable set. You should also be able to use the cantor schroeder bernstein theorem to show that some sets are countable. Our motivation for this is one special case of an infinite cardinality is when a set has the same cardinality as the naturals. And we think of the naturals as being a small infinite set, whatever that means. And our goal is to find other sets that have the same cardinality as this small infinite set, the natural numbers. To start off, we're gonna think about a thought experiment called Hilbert's Hotel. The mathematician Hilbert has a fantastic hotel with one room for every natural number. So it has a room one, a room two, a room three, etc. A farmer arrives at the hotel and they're sad to see that every room in the hotel is full. However, Hilbert, by rearranging his guests, finds a way so that every old guest has a room and the farmer also has a room. How does he do this? Take a moment to think about this. How can Hilbert rearrange the guests to find space for their new person? So one possible answer is that Hilbert asks every current guest to move into the room that's one up. So if you're in room N, you go to room N plus one. That will free up room one for the farmer. Now think to yourself, does, ev does the farmer have a room? Yes, they have room one. And do all the old guests still have a room? The answer is also yes. So this means that even though the hotel was full, there's still room for one more person. This is a very counterintuitive part of infinity. And this is why we use this thought experiment. Now let's look at a generalization of Hilbert's hotel. Now imagine the same situation as before, but this time instead of one farmer, 2020 farmers all show up. Is there a way for Hilbert to find room for all of these farmers? Yeah, this time Hilbert asks every current guest to move into the room 2020 up from them. So guest in room N goes to the room N plus 2020. Then he gives the rooms one through 2020 to the farmers sort of arbitrarily, however he wants. All right, so this is silly and all, but let's do something even sillier. The hotel is so lovely that every current guest phones one friend and tells them to have, that they have to get a room at Hilbert's hotel. How does Hilbert find a way to accommodate all these new friends? So take a moment to think about if every single person phones another friend, how can you find room for all of those people? So one possible answer to this is that Hilbert asks every current guest to move into the room that is double their current room. So if you're in room N, go to room 2N. Then each guest's friend can go into the room that's one above them, so 2N plus 1. You should take a moment to think about another silly version of Hilbert's hotel here. So if each person calls like n squared many people, can you still find room? Things like this. Take, you should think about a, a silly version of it. Here's one even crazier version. So one day, a large soccer team shows up at the hotel. Each soccer player wears a jersey with a different real number on it. So for example, there's a player with a pi jersey, there's a player with a root two jersey, and there's a player with a seven over two jersey, and all real numbers are represented. This is a huge soccer team. Can Hilbert find a way to accommodate this whole team into his hotel? Well, we'll see this later, but you should think about this. This is an interesting question. Now let's get on to the definitions for the day. So a set A is countable if it has the same cardinality as the naturals. In other words, there's a bijection from A to N. So countable sets for us are necessarily going to be infinite. So the following are equivalent. A is countable. There's a bijection G from the naturals to A. So we've swapped the order of the domain and the codomain. And the name countable comes from the following. A can be enumerated using the naturals in a list as A1, A2, A3, without any repeats. So the first two we've seen previously, it's by swapping the domain and codomain. 
But the third one is going to be used for us um, in sort of writing down a countable set. So we're going to be able to provide not quite proofs, but um, nice pictures for why something is countable. Now, why are 2 and 3 equivalent? Well, let's say that you have a bijection from the naturals to A. What should be your first element, your second element, your third element of A? Well, if you have that bijection, then you can write them out as G1, G2, G3. And you can think to yourself, why doesn't this have repeats? And why does it hit every element of A? It has to do with the fact that G is a bijection. You should think about that. Now, formally, we're going to use 1 and 2 to prove our statements about countability, but we'll also use 3 to help us with pictures. So here's an example. Show that the set 2021, 2022, 2023, and all positive integers after that is a countable set. As a hint, this was one of the Hilbert Hotel problems. So let g be the function from the naturals to that set, defined by g of n is n plus 2020. This is pretty clearly a bijection. Here's another example. Show that the set 2, 4, 6, 8 and all positive integers is, is countable. This was also a Hilbert Hotel problem, and we saw this earlier on in the cardinality section. Now a more interesting example. The integers is a countable set. So one way to write it out as a list would be 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 3, minus 3, 4, minus 4, etc., and keep alternating. So this would be an example of an enumeration of the integers where everything is represented eventually and there are no repeats. But the issue with this is that it's not always clear, like, it's not really a proof because it's not clear what the like what the hundredth thing on this list will be. So a more formal way to prove that this is countable is by explicitly giving a bijection from the naturals to the integers. Now this one takes a little bit of thinking, but you can notice that the odd numbers are always increasing by one, and then the even numbers are always decreasing by minus one. So you can describe this as a piecewise function. So basically, you divide it by 2, possibly by adding or subtracting 1 first, and the odd ones get a negative sign in front of them. So you can check for yourself that this actually gives this list, and then once you have that, it's not too hard to show that this is actually a bijection. Here are some other examples of countable sets. The naturals, the integers, the rationals, n cross n, or z cross z and every infinite subset of a countable set. So what this tells us is that countable is the smallest size of infinity. That's a little bit of a weird statement, but um, it's, it's true. So we'll prove all of these things later. Here are some other theorems that we won't prove, but we'll leave them as challenging exercises for you. Show that the collection of all finite strings of zeros and ones is countable. Put another way, all binary numbers are countable. If A and B are both countable, then their union is countable. If A and B are both countable, then their Cartesian product is countable. And if A1, A2, A3, A4, etc. are all countable sets, then the union of all of them is countable. This one sounds really hard, but we'll actually give you a technique for proving it in the next video. Like I said, this is a challenge to prove these things. Um, when I was uh, an undergrad, this first one was really disturbing for me. Okay, let's take some time to reflect. Which of these two situations gives an enumeration or a listing of A? A bijection from A to N or a bijection from N to A? Are there countably many prime numbers? Are there countably many powers of 10? Thank you very much and have a great day.